So another one of my most favorite hunts would be my very first deer that I ever killed. Um, and to give a little bit of a backstory on it, um, I grew up in Southern Illinois um, and we had a family farm that we all got to hunt. Uh, it's not our farm, but my grandfather was really good friends with this farmer. And um, we were still blessed to be able to go up there and hunt. Um, it's just outside of Bonnie, Illinois. Um, and even if you talk to my cousins today, uh, there's a block of woods that I get to hunt and everybody calls it Grandpa's Woods. Uh, obviously it means a lot to everybody even more now because Grandpa is no longer with us, but this little block of woods sits right off of a creek um, and there's a little section that we can't hunt in, out in front of it called the 80. Um, and it's a perfect pinch point. Uh, deer come out of the thickets, they cross the creek and they're going up into the field behind us. And from the time I was old enough to get out there, uh, I got to go with Grandpa and sit in a stand that we put next to his tree. Um, and uh, he killed some doozies. I mean, he had some really good bucks and even my stepdad took a really great deer off of that farm. Um, so it just means a lot, that whole, that whole area did. Uh, when Grandpa got old enough and he couldn't hunt anymore, um, he let me have his deer stand. And I still have a deer stand on that tree that he used to hunt today. And it uh, was really important that somebody sat in Grandpa's woods every year on opening day. And when it was my turn, I was actually sitting up there. I had a, uh, my parents had got me a Winchester 20 gauge youth model. Um, and I think I was given three slugs. That was, that was all I needed. I had one tag, uh, either sex tag, and I was given three slugs and was told to make it count. Um, I was sitting there and it was cold. And back in those days, uh, we sat there all day. We didn't come out of the woods. Um, we didn't have a cell phone. I think we had two-way radios. Uh, and you, you know, if you needed something, you could you could call you could call on the radio, and, and somebody may come get you if you were just so froze or something like that. But we sat there all day, and on this in particular morning, uh, a big doe, big nanny doe, came walking through there, um, and uh, I pulled that 20 gauge up to shoot that big nanny doe, and I shot her right in the butt, and that thing fell down, and then got back up and took off running and I had no idea where I hit that deer. Of course, when my stepdad got there, it was, did you make a good shot on it? And it was, yes, absolutely I did. And I had not. Uh, we got down there and we started looking for blood and then you could just see in his eyes, he was like, yeah, I thought you said you made a good shot. And you know, it was, it was gonna be one of those. Uh, big time tracking job. We tracked that thing until it was very dark, uh, got my cousins involved, and we hadn't seen my uncle yet, and I knew he was out there somewhere. And uh, when we finally met back up at the trucks and basically had just given up, and, and you know, I, I, I lost my first deer. Uh, my uncle come pulling up on a four-wheeler, and he had, uh, he had found her and then had to finish her off for me. Um, but it, it, was a, it was a very big nanny doe, and it was just one of those things, you know, you're, you're out there on a, on a family farm, um, and everybody got to participate, so it just meant a lot.